Welcome to this webinar on joint hypermobility, presented by the Children and Young People's Integrated Therapy Service at Hertfordshire Community NHS Trust. This webinar has been produced for patients, parents and carers to be used alongside the advice provided by the therapy service. This webinar includes information about hypermobility, as well as strategies and management for your child to complete. Joint hypermobility is defined as an excessive joint range of movement in an otherwise healthy individual. It is a description, not a diagnosis. It is not a disease or illness, rather the way someone is put together. It is considered a normal finding by medical professionals. Joint hypermobility is common in children. 71% of under eight year olds are considered to have joint hypermobility and children are generally more hypermobile than adults. The majority of children will become less supple as they get older, but a small percentage will remain very flexible. Symptoms may vary depending on severity and the number of joints involved. Often a lack of strength and a misunderstanding of the condition can cause more problems. Many hypermobile children experience no adverse symptoms or difficulties and are able to use their hypermobility to their advantage, such as with gymnastics. Hypermobility is most common in the Asian population, then the Afro-Caribbean population, and thirdly, white Caucasians. Whilst the majority of children who present with hypermobility experience no difficulties, a small number of children do present with some symptoms, this would be termed symptomatic hypermobility. Hypermobility can present with a variety of symptoms, including difficulties with gross and fine motor skills, reduced balance and coordination, fatigue and poor stamina, flat feet and in-toeing gait, weak muscles, fidgeting as they're trying to find comfortable positions, clumsy or poor body and spatial awareness, increased stumbles and falls, a reluctance to take part in physical activity, generalised or specific pain, and a greater risk of joint dislocation or subluxation. Remember that not everyone with hypermobility has all or the same symptoms, as every child is individual. Hypermobility describes a group of conditions related to joint hypermobility in the absence of other diseases or illnesses. It affects body structure and function. It may affect only one or two joints, or it may affect multiple joints, or the whole body. A small number of children with symptomatic hypermobility may also have multi-system involvement, and this is where it can affect other areas such as digestion. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome refers to a group of 20 specific conditions, all of which are diagnosed through laboratory testing and which have an identified genetic profile. These are identified through strict criteria, including stretchy skin, and can only be diagnosed by a paediatrician. There are some other conditions in which hypermobile symptoms exist, such as in Marfan syndrome and Down syndrome. In these cases, the overall diagnosis takes precedence, but the symptoms may still need to be managed. Hypermobility is a genetically inherited collagen disorder, although the genetic basis is not yet fully identified. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body and is found in most connective tissues. This is a biological tissue that supports, connects, or separates different types of tissues and organs. Collagen in hypermobile tissue differs in structure from typical collagen, resulting in a more stretchy, weaker tissue. Hypermobile connective tissue can be found throughout the body, e.g. the digestive system, blood system, nervous system, and skin. Hypermobility can be a multi-system disorder and can be associated with a range of symptoms which may include constipation or frequent bowel movements, reflux, easy bruising, squint or a lazy eye, cold feet or hands and excessive sweating, pain or pins and needles especially in the lower legs, stretchy skin and pronounced scars or an altered reaction to local anaesthetic which may need to be discussed with your dentist or doctor. Where the child is experiencing pain and functional difficulties at home and or at school, it is important that they are recognised and managed appropriately. Hypermobility has a variety of associated symptoms, which can be managed with the right information and the right support. If you need to see a physiotherapist, they can support with strengthening, pain and fatigue management and the development of gross motor skills. If you need to see an occupational therapist or OT, 
they can support with functional difficulties affecting activities of daily living, such as fine motor skill development, as well as supporting participation in play and school activities. Effective management involves good understanding of the condition and implementing long-term management. This includes strategies becoming integrated into daily life for the child with regular fitness activities, pacing and joint protection strategies. It may involve completing activities at home, school and in the community. If you are assessed by a physiotherapist, the assessment may include assessment tools such as the Baton score, which looks at joint range of movement in specific joints, and the Brighton criteria, which looks at multi-system symptoms, muscle strength testing, review of functional difficulties, and gross motor skills such as standing, walking, balance, and coordination activities. If you're assessed by an occupational therapist, the assessment may include upper limb and hand function, fine motor skills, activities of daily living such as dressing or using cutlery, as well as using standardised assessment tools. The management of hypermobility includes completing regular activities to build and maintain strong muscles, good stamina and good core stability and balance. Hypermobility involves lifelong management. Your child needs to have an active lifestyle with activities and play that they enjoy. It's good to start now so they can create healthy habits for the future. Activities can include after-school activities such as cubs or brownies, cycling, using a scooter, going to soft play or going to the park. Swimming is recommended as the best activity for children with hypermobility to complete, as moving through the resistance of water helps with general strengthening and stamina building, while the water also protects the joints. Attending sports such as ballet, gymnastics, football, tennis netball or badminton are also great activities. However, this list of sports is not limited to just these activities. Some sports may benefit from hypermobile joints, such as dance or gymnastics, which in turn will help to strengthen the joints. Some sports activities may include heavy contact and can be seen as potentially causing high risk of injury and therefore may need to be modified, such as rugby. It's also important to manage your child's weight and also to integrate personalised strategies and advice from your therapists into your child's daily routine. Hypermobility is a lifelong condition, but can be managed by adapting tasks, including finding ways that enables the child to participate. This may be necessary because the child finds the task difficult, and by changing the way the task is done, they may be more successful. For example, using chunkier tools that are easier to grip, such as pencils or cutlery, finding a different water bottle that a child can open independently, or using adapted clothing may be an option, such as elasticated waists or trousers rather than a zip and button, or using a pre-knotted tie. You can also use other dressing strategies, such as only unbuttoning the top three buttons and then taking the shirt off over your head, rather than unfastening all the buttons. Putting a key ring on a zip also makes it easier to grasp, or get your child to practice using bigger buttons. It is also important to try and manage their fatigue. If muscle pain after exercise is a problem, they should not stop being active, but pacing activities may help. Pacing means to gradually increase an activity in order to achieve a goal. Don't do too much activity on one day, but spread it throughout the week and focus on building more strength and fitness. Pacing is about planning, prioritising and having rest breaks to build up stamina. By doing this, you avoid boom and bust. Pain in hypermobile children is usually linked to muscle fatigue and weakness rather than damage or injury and is often in the lower limb and hands. You can help manage their pain by doing regular exercises as pain will often be less when the muscles are strong, using rest breaks during activity and pacing your activities, using hot or cold packs or warm baths and showers, massage, hugs and the all-important magic kisses, being understanding of the pain experienced, using distraction techniques, timetabling your activities, such as avoiding busy consecutive active days. And remember, painkillers are not always effective unless it is an acute injury that is causing the pain. Some strategies for managing symptomatic hypermobility include protecting the joints. This includes joints being used in a good position and avoiding extreme positions such as W sitting. You should avoid repetitive movements because this can put continued strain on the joints. 
It is also important to provide support to improve alignment of the body, as our bodies work most effectively when we are in alignment, providing a stable base from which we can complete activities. A good place to start is with the feet and ankles. When buying shoes, you should look for shoes that have the following. Shoes that are stiff around the heel, a sturdy sole that acts as a shock absorber. Soft uppers, preferably with laces or a buckle that can support the whole foot. And boots that fasten with laces because they're often more effective and comfortable for the child. Your therapist will advise you if they feel that your child needs insoles or whether you require more support. Upper limb strengthening activities may include participation in everyday activities such as carrying shopping, taking the washing off the line, cleaning windows or filling the recycling bin. Other activities such as climbing frames, using a basketball hoop or balloon volleyball may also be useful. Activities which strengthen the hands may include using toys which give resistance such as construction toys or play-doh and slime, craft activities, helping in the kitchen with activities such as peeling fruit, baking or wringing out a cloth, board games which involve fine motor skills such as operation, or other activities like card games or Rubik's Cubes. Some children may have difficulties with handwriting and they may benefit from using pencil grips, especially if you notice your child hyperextends their fingers when they try to write, taking regular rest breaks and also trying to choose the right type of pen. Some pens have increased fluidity of ink. There are also specific handwriting pens such as rollerballs, gel pens and choosing the right one for your child may be really helpful to them. For children who find writing especially difficult and struggle to note information down, it may be recommended that they use information technology support. This may include using different ways for your child to record their work, such as using a laptop. And if they are going to start using a laptop, start touch typing skills early on. There are also voice recognition programmes that they can access. Some tools used for everyday activities may need to be adapted. This may include things such as scissors to assist with cutting or using chunky handled cutlery. For children with symptomatic hypermobility, it is important that you continue to liaise with school to highlight any areas of need. This may include if your child needs additional time when doing formal written tests and you should make sure that you tell your teacher ahead of time. Your child may need to use a writing slope which provides a stable base to rest their hands on and also prevent them from slumping forward. They may benefit from sitting on a wedge seat cushion to ensure they have a good posture. They should be able to sit with their feet touching the ground easily when they're sat on their chair with their bottom back against the chair. When using the toilet, the child's feet should be on a surface, either on the floor or a toilet step. If the toilet is too large, a smaller toilet insert may help the child feel more stable. They may need a small grab rail near the toilet to hold themselves for balance when wiping themselves. If the tap is difficult to turn, lever taps may be easier. Your child's school bag should be a lighter weight if possible. Rucksacks are better as they distribute the weight equally rather than shoulder bags which put more pressure on one side. This may mean some forward planning including use of lockers, not having all their books in their bag at once or having duplicates of textbooks at home and at school. We've now come to the part of our presentation where we're going to talk about some general exercise ideas that you can complete with your child. If you see a physiotherapist, they may advise on some specific exercises for you to complete, which may target specific joints. However, these exercises we are going to discuss encourage general strengthening. We recommend that you start with a low number of repetitions and slowly build up until they're able to complete three lots of 10 of each exercise. Your children are not expected to complete all of these exercises daily, but they should choose a variety to complete on a regular basis. Along with these exercises, it would also be beneficial for your child to increase their daily activity with the previously advised sports and activities. These activities will be much more engaging for your child to complete long term. It is really important that before any exercise, you should start with a warm-up to get the body ready for the activity you're going to complete. Controlling a ball can be challenging. Try and make an obstacle course that your child has to kick a ball around. Supermans are also a good activity. Lying flat on the floor, 
and lifting your torso, arms and legs off the floor and holding for as long as possible. You can complete step ups on a step or on your stairs at home and see how many your child can do in a minute. Squats are also great. You can try and keep your knees apart and keeping your heels on the ground. You can also do this by practicing sit to stands. You can complete a wall push up by placing your hands on the wall, slowly lowering yourself down onto your hands, keeping your back straight as much as possible. Work on your balance by standing on one leg. If you find this too easy, you can close your eyes. To make this more challenging, stand with your foot on a ball. And the ultimate challenge, try and do some toe taps to the ball. Lying on your back and lifting your leg straight and holding it there is also a good challenge. You can also lie on your front and try and lift your leg up straight. Make sure that your body doesn't rotate as you do it. As we said earlier, sit to stands are a great way of practicing squats. Start from a higher height to begin with and don't use your hands. And once you find this easy, you can then move on to a lower seat. Slow and steady wins the race with this exercise. Don't try to rush. Walking along a tightrope or a line on the floor is also a good activity. As you can see here, we've used dressing gown cords. You can walk forwards, backwards, or even stand still on the cord. Trying to jump, trying to clear your feet off the floor is also a fun activity. And as you can see, all ages can complete this. To make jumping more challenging, try and jump over obstacles, making sure to clear your feet. Hopping is also good. Try and turn it into a game like we have here. Planks are a big challenge, but if you're able to do them, they really help with strengthening your core. Just make sure that your back is straight and your bottom is tucked in. High kneeling is also a great activity, and there's so many things that you can do in high kneeling. Once you find high kneeling easy though, you can transition into half kneeling, but make sure that you don't always stay on the same leg and keep swapping. You can combine squatting and jumping to do frog jumps. Crab walking is also a good activity, but just make sure you don't let your bottom fall to the floor. You can complete counterpoints in various ways. Go on your hands and knees and try and lift your leg behind you straight. When you can do that, then lift an arm in front of you straight. When you can also do that, then you can try one leg behind you and the other arm in front. As you can see, this is quite challenging to try and keep still. To complete a clam, you lie on your side, bend your knees up, ankles together, and try and open your legs up, slowly bring it up and down. Bridging is a staple for core stability exercises. Lie on your back and lift your bottom off the ground. See how long you can hold it for. Try not to use your hands if possible, you can wrap them around your chest. If you want to make it a bit more exciting, you can roll a ball underneath. Once you're able to do this for longer periods of time, you can then try and do it with one leg. You can also lift your leg out when you're lying on your side. Same principles as before, try and keep the leg straight and try and hold for as long as you can. Exercise does not have to be in targeted sessions. 
As you can see here, you can find lots of opportunities to work on your balance and your core just by the things around you. Balancing on this tree trunk, for example, is a great way that you can work on your balance while also going on a fun walk. It is important to remember that one child's hypermobility issues may be different to another child. It's not a one-size-fits-all condition. There are lots of celebrities with symptomatic hypermobility, including Billie Eilish, Demi Lovato, Russell Kane and Shirley Houston. In summary, just remember your child needs understanding of hypermobility from school, family and other people that may be supporting them. They need to be strong and fit and they need to learn strategies that they find beneficial so they can reach their full potential. We've spoken about a lot of resources and ideas in this webinar that you might want to try with your child at home or at school. So we thought it might be helpful to put a list together of the most helpful ones that we as therapists recommend. These include pencil grips, writing slopes, adapted scissors, dye some non-slip mats, gym balls or physio rolls, wobble cushions, wedge cushions, ankle weights, but please only use as advised by your physiotherapist, elasticated shoelaces, lace toggles and key turners. There are lots of really helpful websites as well where you can find out more information. This also includes on our Children and Young People's Therapy Service websites, where we also have lists where you can find some of the resources we previously mentioned. We would recommend looking at these websites to familiarise yourself more with information about hypermobility and its management. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar on hypermobility. We hope that you were able to learn some new information about hypermobility, as well as find out new ways to help manage your child's symptoms. Following this webinar, if you would like to speak to a therapist, you can do so through our advice line by calling 01923 470 680, choosing option 3 and then option 1, and being sure to leave a message. Our advice line is a dedicated telephone number which parents, carers and professionals can call to speak to a therapist about a new referral or their child's current needs. Please make sure that you leave a message and a therapist will contact you. The calls are responded to by therapist on weekdays. You can also find out more information on our website at hct.nhs.uk. Scan the QR code and you'll be taken to our Children and Young People's Therapy Service page. You can also follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, where we post lots of helpful information and resources. Finally, we would be grateful for your feedback about this webinar. All feedback we receive helps to improve our service, so any information you are able to provide will greatly help us to make things better.